Hi everyone, Father Scott Vanderveer here. St. Augustine was once famously asked, what is the most important virtue of them all? And he said, the most important virtue is humility. Then they asked, what's the second most important virtue? And he said, humility. What's the third? He said, humility. The first three spots on the list of most important virtues are all humility. That's how important it is. We need humility all the time for so many situations. And life is always giving us homework so that we can grow in our ability to develop and use our humility. As I film this in the last week of Advent, I have a sty. It's ugly and it's been worse than this. Earlier last week, this sty was really ugly and there was no way that I could hide it. It was this blemish, this imperfection in my face that I had to deal with. And it was a great opportunity for me to develop some humility. Now, if you're watching this later, you might say, is he still dealing with this? And the answer is, I don't know. Although some styes do last for a while. I have a, a tendency to get them. I'm a, I'm a little bit susceptible. And so I get a sty probably every year or two. But this one on the top lid really embarrasses me because I can see people looking at it. I can tell that there's no way that it's not distracting them. I, I've got some parishioners that have asked me, are you okay? I feel like it makes it look also like maybe I got into a fight or I've got some story that I'm trying to hide from people. What is interesting is blemishes in our physical body can be a great opportunity to deal with humility. And they give us a chance to think about what we do with those spiritual or emotional or mental blemishes that we have. This is kind of a metaphor, this sty, for other problems that my spirit has, that I, I have with my personality. Maybe it's a lack of patience. Maybe it's trouble being angry or prideful. Maybe I'm greedy or I give in to gluttony. All of those struggles are blemishes on our spirit, on our personhood. They're, they're areas where we're not reaching our full potential, where we have some growth to do. And just as I need to spend some time putting hot compresses on this sty and making sure that I'm helping my body do whatever it can to flush out this problem, the same thing is true about our weaknesses and our flaws. Those things need our attention. They need the hot compresses of time and exercises that we give ourselves. So for example, if I have a problem with patience, the hot compress that I need perhaps is to pick the longest line at the grocery store and, and work through the feelings that I have. Not leave the drive through even though I've been inconvenienced by a long wait. We have an opportunity to work on these struggles day by day by just not running from them, by being willing to address them, by not pretending that something that is true about us isn't. There will always be a desire to cover up our struggles, just like we try to cover up our blemishes. There are makeups and cover-ups that could be used to disguise the parts of ourselves that are not the way we would like them to be. But those things don't work as well in the spiritual life. We can't run away from the fact that we have a struggle with laziness or with envy. We can't ignore those things. Those are, those are problems that we need to face. If we're a a classic procrastinator or someone who rages whenever we're impatient, that's something that we need to pay some attention to. We need to put some hot compresses on that. And those hot compresses are the things that we do to try to remedy 
and address those weaknesses. I will always have a susceptibility to styes. I've had them throughout my adult life and they're not going to go away, I would assume. The same thing is true with our weaknesses and our character defects. We may find when we get to heaven that God chose them for us particularly so that we could work on reaching our full potential by the path of those struggles and faults and flaws and defects. One thing I think that's really interesting about our physical versus our spiritual struggles is that when someone has a, a physical situation, an illness, let's say that on top of a sty, I also have, hmm, what would be a typical thing? Maybe I've got diabetes, I've got a sty, and I have anemia. And if people heard that about me, they'd say, oh, poor guy, what a hard time he has. That's really too bad that he has to deal with all those things. I get compassion and love and empathy when I'm dealing with a lot of physical problems all piled on top of the other. But if I'm dealing with that spiritually, if I have a struggle with patience and with pride and with greed, often people don't cut us the same slack and we don't cut ourselves the same slack. Rather than saying, oh, look at all that he's struggling with. That must be so hard. I'll pray for him. We instead often bring out the weapon of judgment and say, come on, what's your problem? Why are you jealous? Why are you afraid? Why can't you just do it? Why are you procrastinating all the time? So if we can apply the same kind of compassion with people's spiritual, emotional, and mental struggles as we do with their physical problems, then we'll be showing a lot of love. And I'm sure that God is pleased when we develop that great gift of compassion and empathy. It's funny that our noticing other people's physical blemishes is unappealing to everyone. Everyone knows that that's kind of shallow and and vain and surfacy to focus on other people's physical beauty. But it's interesting that focusing on other people's spiritual beauty or their flaws is just as unvirtuous. Being judgmental about what other people are struggling with makes us less beautiful. It's like a great big sty on our spiritual eye, which is actually a great metaphor because it clouds our vision. A sty makes my eye close instead of being able to fully open. And that's what judgment does too. We can't see people as they really are. We see them through the filter of our judgment. So I hope that by the time you see this, this will be all cleared up. And that's why I'm filming it while it's still going on. So if you're seeing this during Christmas week or later and you're feeling badly for me, I'll take it. I appreciate it very much but hopefully this isn't my struggle. I'm on to something else. But let's make room for all of those physical imperfections that are part of, for some reason that's unclear to us, the way God made us. Our susceptibilities, our tendencies, our weaknesses, they're all part of a larger plan, we have to assume. And let's be more gentle with people's spiritual defects and malformations as we are with the physical ones. May God bless you with a beautiful Christmas season and a joyful New Year.